Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful Podcast, a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful Podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Welcome to GSMC, America Still Beautiful Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. Hello, hello everybody. I am your host, Alyssa Joe. How is it going today? I hope you're having a wonderful day so far. Welcome back to another episode of All Feel Good Positive News. You know that's what I'm here for. So throw away those old negative headlines. Pay attention to all the good stuff. All, there's so many good stories out there these days. I know our world is still a little bit chaotic. Chaotic, but there are so many good things still happening and I am here to share those stories with you. I've got lots of good ones today. I say that every episode, but I've got lots of good ones today. Um, I got some positive things about the pandemic because you know me, I can't go one episode without trying to throw in something positive about the pandemic. Um, I'm also going to share with you some pretty cool inventions, some just mind-blowing people, what they have come up with these days, um, some scientific things. You guys know how much I love those. Some random acts of kindness. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Venmo challenge that's been going around. It's been viral. Well, I got a really cool story about that challenge that surprised a waiter with a huge tip. I'll explain that later on in today's episode. I've got high school students handing out hygiene kits. I've got so many cool things. So today's going to be a good episode. Stick around. Listen to the whole thing. You don't want to miss all this feel-good positive news. But with all of that being said, I thought that I would start today's episode off with something positive about the pandemic because I just have to do it every single episode. So there was this recent survey, and you guys also know how much I love these surveys that come out. And there was this recent survey saying that Americans are crediting the COVID-19 crisis for helping them become more financially responsible. Okay, I know the pandemic has caused a lot of finance, financial stress on a lot of people, but it's also made people really think about their money and think more strategically of how they're spending it and exactly what they're doing. So this survey did say that Americans are crediting the crisis to making, to helping them become more responsible with their money. So, interesting enough, over half of Americans that pulled in this survey said that the pandemic will finally teach them how to be smart with their money. And a similar survey that happened two years ago shows that the number of U.S. adults who feel very smart with their money has actually risen from 42% in 2018 to 51% in 2020. So another two in three participants said that the pandemic has turned them into a frugal person. And the polls of 2,000 Americans, they both conducted, um, they looked into how the pandemic has changed people's mindsets about their money and how they define being cheap versus being frugal. So the latest survey was meant to mirror the one that did run in 2018 that I mentioned that was 42%, um, and then now it's at 51%. And this is just a means of comparing just how much the results have changed over the course of two years and a global pandemic um, within that time frame, of course, as well. So tipping the minimum, so 15 to 20 percent, regardless of service, was found to be by people in 2020 to be cheap. So 15 to 20 percent has apparently known to be cheap to a lot of people and skimping on the temp uh in 2018 was voted to be an act of of frugality so perhaps this can be explained by just like the shift in gratitude towards our frontline workers maybe that's why we have that increase in that that um aspect and then declining to be part of rounds at the bar was considered cheap by respondents 
And then if you decline to be a part of the rounds, like a drink rounds at a bar was considered to be cheap by respondents. And that was as cal uh, calculating your share of the group bill down to the cent. So then other cheap actions, I guess, were still using very outdated electronics, re-gifting presents, um, diluting soap containers with water. Um, so conversely, purchasing clothes at a secondhand store was found to be frugal, um, as was buying off-brand off brand food products and buying no-name electronics and always seeking out deals or coupons when going shopping. And participants also considered tracking their electricity and heating usage at home to keep the utility bills down to be frugal behavior as well. So according to the survey, the average American becomes a frugal person at the age of 31, with one in four saying they became thriftier when they were even younger. And two in three Americans also said they consider being called frugal a compliment. Um, but the coronavirus pandemic has impacted financial situations of many people. Um, and they've it's brought new focus to the importance of prioritizing our spending, right? And that's definitely a positive thing when it comes to the pandemic. We really have to be thinking about where our money is going these days. And we see a shift towards smarter spending, and that was 65% of respondents that are indicating that the pandemic has transformed them into a frugal person, and 67% reporting that being called frugal is actually a compliment. And the survey also found that being financially conscious can be important on the dating scene as well. So two-thirds of these polled uh, said that they actually think using a coupon on a first date is completely acceptable. And 45% said they would happily use a, a coupon on a first date. Um, three in four said that they that more they age, the more desirable it is for a romantic prospect having a smart financial mindset. Gonna have to agree with that one. So what was considered cheap or frugal? And cheap is so tipping the minimal acceptable amount, declining to be a part of the rounds of the bar, calculating your part of a group bill to the last cent, um, keeping outdated or worn out electronics um, as long as they still kind of barely work, um, reusing tea bags or coffee filters, eating food a few days past its expiration date, uh, lengthening longevity of soap by diluting the soap bottles with water, and then re-gifting those presents. And then what's considered frugal is regularly tracking electricity use, um, regularly tracking the home thermostat, um, watching movies at home instead of in the theater, um, shopping at secondhand clothing stores, buying off-brand food products, buying no-name electronics, um, giving up drinking while at bars or restaurants, or only having alcohol at home, and seeking out deals or coupons for all purchases. So there's a little positivity about the pandemic that I wanted to share with you. Now I have one more story that's actually a positive thing as well. There has been a 15-year-old boy who has been refurbishing old computers and then donating them to help students that are in need who are going to have to be doing their schooling from their house now during this pandemic. So this is pretty cool. His name is Christopher Kilpatrick. He's 15 years old and he made such a huge impact on his community. Um, he is a rising sophomore, um, at the Bulls school in, um, sorry, in Jacksonville. And he understands that in today's learning environment, a computer is essential. Um, but he also knows that there's a digital divide between the have and the have not. And he said, I almost had an epiphany when I realized not everyone can afford a computer. So he was interning with, uh, Johnny McBurney's team at Urban Mining and he saw an opportunity says we get retired machines from businesses all the time and the opportunity was to take some of those retired machines and instead of them becoming salvage goods he wanted to refurbish them and then donate them to close the digital to close the digital divide and this just became a summer project this is what he's been working on all summer kept him extremely busy he was doing four to five machines a day refurbishing them and in the end, he completely refurbished 20 desktop computers, and that includes monitors, programs, and other needs within those computer systems. He goes, I installed various applications and made sure they are all working. So now those 20 computers will be donated to the nonprofit Big Brothers Big Sisters. Um, and yeah, just an incredible thing. He says, one great thing I learned from this is the importance of recycling. And now that this summer experience just may become the new expectation for future interns as well that are working at this company. Um, he says, that we just think that we started something really great. Um, the computers will be delivered before school starts to those kids in need in the community. 
So there you go, two positive things about the pandemic, uh, paying more attention to our money, and just a 15-year-old boy spending his summer refurbishing computers to donate them to need. Pretty cool story. All right, so it is time for a little bit of a break, but do not go anywhere. You already know I have lots more feel-good stories to share with you. Uh, when we come back, I'm going to share share with you a story about a man who learned robotics on YouTube, and it is incredible with what he is like, what he's doing now, just from what he's learned from YouTube. You're not going to want to miss it. It is such a cool story. So stay tuned. I will be right back. The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or any where you find podcasts just type gsmc in the search bar Welcome back to GSMC, America's Still Beautiful Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Alyssa Joe. Hello, hello. Welcome back. I'm sharing more feel-good, positive stories with you. You, f- you can forget about all those negative headlines these days and just focus on the good when you're listening to this podcast. So this next one I want to share with you is pretty incredible. It is about this man who learned about robotics on YouTube. Um, his name is Easton LaChapelle. And he was always fascinated by robotics and, like, how things worked. And this kind of led him down the path of his passion and to learn more about prosthetics engineering. So he literally learned about robotics on YouTube, and he is now creating affordable 3D prosthetics for others. Incredible, right? So he turned to YouTube just to start to experiment and master everything from the core fundamentals of electronics to software interfaces and reading sensors, all those fun things. He's only 25 years old, and he decided to use this new skill and create a working device, making it all the way to the White House Science Fair with then-President Obama. And during this science fair, um, he encountered a young girl with a prosthetic arm that looked, what he says, archaic. And it cost about $80,000, okay? And he remembers thinking, this is really her best available option. Like, are you kidding me? So he then decided to dedicate his life to solving the affordability of prosthetic devices and creating technology that can impact someone's life on a very deep level. So there are over 40 million amputees worldwide. Only about 5% of them have access to prosthetic devices because it is so pricey. And it was just not, he said it was just not acceptable to him and he just wanted to do something about it. So he started to develop a working prototype and then he found a company called Unlimited Tomorrow, which makes low cost machine printed prosthetic limbs. And then just in under 30 days, the company was able to raise $1.56 million to release its first product and provide millions of prosthetic devices to people worldwide at a very affordable cost. And he just says, you know, we make a product called True Limb. It's an affordable 3D printing prosthetic limb that uses a special remote fitting process that is personalized to your skin tone, shape, and size for the perfect fit. And he says this is all because of YouTube. He was able to turn his passion into a business um, that is having such a positive impact on people's lives. Cool story, right? Learned this all from YouTube and now he's making such a huge difference. If you want to find out more about this story, there is a video on YouTube. It's just called Easton Lush Appel's Story. And it just shares a little bit more exactly about what the product is, how they came up with it, how it works, all those different things. So it's a cool video. Head over there and check that out if you are interested in that. 
Um, now the next story I want to share with you is about a dog, okay? And he went viral. Sorry, she went viral, okay? She, her name is Kareth. Um, you might see her on Instagram. Her name is Kareth the Golden Retriever. On Instagram, it's Kareth, so K-E-R-I-T-H underscore the underscore golden underscore retriever. Has really gone viral or starting to at least go viral on social media. Um, she has been exploring and helping firefighters feel better. So she is a very sweet golden retriever. She has a very important job, and that is she's a certified crisis response therapy dog. So she's basically tasked with helping exhausted firefighters get the kind of comfort that they need. That comfort, that just warm, fuzzy feeling um, after fighting those scary blazes. So, so it's especially important work right now because hundreds across Marin County um, are working long shifts to try and contain the woodware, the Woodward fire that's currently blazing in Northern California. And she has her own Instagram account, like I said, so that's kind of where things really started to pick up. But there's so many fun photos on her Instagram account of she's adorable, first of all, and she's just showing so much love and comfort to these firefighters during this time. So they say she brings levity and a sense of playfulness, even though they know the task of the day will be challenging. So just a cool thing. She has so many pictures with these firefighters on Instagram. And she is trained to be a guide dog. And her super excitable nature made her not quite suited to her original task. So then she went on to become a therapy dog in the emergency ward of a local hospital. But everyone says that her favorite people are firefighters. So cool. So says she makes people feel loved, special, and important. And one firefighter said that Kareth has the uncanny ability to make me feel like I am the most important person in the world. How adorable is that? So go check out this cute golden retriever that is putting smiles on firefighters' faces in California right now. Kareth underscore the underscore golden underscore retriever. There's lots of fun pictures. You'll just see how lovable this dog is from the pictures. Now, the next story I want to share with you is about some teens who decided to bring some light to a dark time. Um, they wanted some change in their community. And when a turbulent, you know, of racial protests were happening, this group of teenagers in Chicago's Austin neighborhood, they wanted to find a way to try to uplift their marginalized West Side community. And so they started to brainstorm what could they do. They wanted to bring that darkness into light. They wanted to bring some positivity, just some just some good feels in this community um, that they desperately needed at this time. And they found it. So they said they decided to actually transform a liquor store into a very needed food market. It's pretty cool. So say with a little help from their friends, it's like these young entrepreneurs, they transform this gutted liquor store um, into the, what they call Austin Harvest. So it's a pop-up food market to provide healthy food alternatives to their undeserved neighborhood. So the genesis of the project began with listening circles that were led by um, by the Hand Club for Kids. And they say, what I heard coming out of what the students wanted to take all those raw and powerful emotions and turn them into something good and do something from a social justice standpoint. standpoint. So that was the group's executive director, Donita Travis. Um, that was She's the uh, group's executive director of By the Hand Club for Kids. And, you know, one of the issues that the kids felt was most urgent was this shortage of healthy food options in the area and the result of years of systematic neglect and racism. So for areas like Austin, it's classified as food deserts and groceries and fresh produce are difficult to come by even in the best of times. So the situation worsened when several um, area grocery stores were forced to close temporary after being looted. So then within the half mile radius, Austin Harvest has now sprung to life um, where there were formerly a dozen liquor stores, but only two food markets. So, you know, food is a basic ne necessity, right, in life, but it's not always available, especially healthy food for these communities. Um, and it's just a basic necessity that they didn't have access to. So when the, dis this, the discussion turned to the idea of repurposing one of these looted properties into this much-needed community resources, the kids just took the idea and they started to run with it. 
and the project got enthusiastic backing from a number of professional athletes. So former Chicago Bears uh, linebacker Sam Aiko uh, led the charge. They say people care. It's a time for people to show up. I think our world has changed. So for us to be able to come together and say we're going to lead that change, it means something. Um, there were also some other athletes who contributed to the cause, including the Blackhawks, uh, Jonathan Toes, the Bears quarterback, Mitch Trubitsky, um, White Sox pitcher, Lucas Galato, um, Cubs outfielder, Jason Hayward, and the St. Louis Cardinals first baseman, Paul Goldschmidt. So they all came together and they raised $500,000 in seed money to get this project rolling. Um, and then by the hand brought in architects and branding experts for guidance. And then the vision for this Austin harvest was shaped and implemented by the youthful participants that kind of came up with this project and decided to run with it. They say that we've been behind the scenes completely. We've just discussed how we want to show our market, where we wanted our market to be, what we sell and what we look like. And then this is who, who runs it. So kind of taking a teach someone to fish rather than give someone a fish approach, they say, uh, the Hatchery Chicago has also pitched in to offer hands-on lessons in real-world business skills, including the licensing and customer service, as well as culinary pathways program that were aimed at helping interested teens work toward careers in the food industry. And it was just a real entrepreneurship opportunity for these for these kids and they got a lot out of it their community got a lot out of it you know it wasn't just turning this liquor store into a food market it was helping the community but also helping them build pathways for themselves within this entrepreneurship finding those opportunities so pretty cool story i thought of everyone coming together to help a community and just so many good things come from that so all right, it is time for another break, but don't go anywhere. I have a few more really great stories to share with you. Um, I do have that one about the Venmo challenge. I got one about some high schoolers um, creating hygiene kits to poor neighbors in the neighborhood. I actually have a couple who was supposed to have their wedding during COVID, and they didn't have their wedding, but what they did instead is just remarkable. So stay tuned. I will be right back to share those stories with you. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. stretch of GSMC America Still Beautiful podcast. Hello, hello. Okay, I'm going to jump right in so I can share more stories with you, like as many as I can. So the next story I want to share with you um, is about these, This it's a Brazilian high schooler who started to hand out hygiene kits to poor neighbors who can't afford hand sanitizer during this time. So I guess COVID-19 cases have been on the rise in Brazil, and many of the city's residents have decided to take action. But this high school student, his name is Gabriel uh, Klinger, he organized a project that was intended to help people from um, areas in Brazil defend themselves against the virus who could not afford um, those hygiene products like hand sanitizer. So, you know, many people live in extreme poverty in this area, and they struggle to find themselves um you know, they really struggle in these conditions um, and they're living in a very dangerously unhygienic conditions right now, especially now during this pandemic. 
They said that some of these people from these communities can't even afford to buy a soap bar. So this was a huge thing. So after reading several documents and scientific papers on COVID-19, Gabriel stumbled upon a simple, affordable, and effective solution against it. And he described as being the perfect weapon of self-defense against the virus. And when he realized that his solution was also much cheaper and easier to obtain than 70% alcohol gel, he immediately launched this project, aiming to use it for the benefit of the people in this community. He says, the core of the project has been to share information I had regarding a homemade solution for combating the coronavirus with some of the most vulnerable people in the area. So he started crowd, he started a crowdfunding campaign. He raised enough money to purchase these hygiene products and food items for over 500 families in those communities. And as a part of the project, he then distributed these project, these products in the community and then making sure to teach people how to prepare the solution with the items that they received. So the project was a huge success. Um, they were able to distribute all the kits in an organized and smooth way with social distancing. And it felt incredible to be involved in a community in this way and be able to make a real and tangible con- contribution during a time like this. So he organized a second round of his project so he could help even more people. So it just doesn't stop there. I love this. I love hearing stories when they come up with an idea, they do it once and then they just don't stop, right? It's addicting to help people out like that and to do good. So there you go. Another good story about the pandemic. Now let's talk about this Venmo challenge I wanted to share with you. So if you haven't heard of this Venmo challenge, basically people go to their social media pages and they ask their followers to Venmo them as little as 50 cents. And then they have a goal, right? They, they say goal, whatever it is, maybe it's a hundred bucks, maybe it's 50 bucks, maybe it's 10 bucks even, like whatever it is. And they ask their followers to start donating. And then once they reach their goal, they give it to a server. So in this case, um, this restaurant server that was in California was absolutely shocked to receive a thousand dollar tip. Um, so this challenge is this, this man, his goal was to raise a thousand dollars. He actually ended up raising fourteen hundred dollars. Um, and he posted this over on his social media. But he does explain that the Venmo challenge is, you know, he just says that he wanted to raise $1,000. And he ended up giving it to this California server. And he, so he gave him $1,000 in cash. And then he gave the $400 actually to the hostess at the restaurant as well. I hadn't heard about the Venmo challenge before I read this story, which is pretty cool, but I guess it is going around right now. So people are pulling to their their social media accounts and just asking for like small donations basically and then just paying it forward. So if you ever see one of those challenges, I know, you know, we can't all donate money to these things but super cool to see and I love seeing the reactions of these stories this waiter that received the thousand dollars was quite in desperate need of this and was just so excited so there's videos actually on YouTube Instagram TikTok of this particular scenario search up the Venmo challenge on Google you'll find a bunch of different fun feel good videos of people doing it so keep that challenge going I love a good challenge like that that is so cool Okay, now I want to share with you my last story of today is this couple who they, you know, they had their wedding planned and it was during the pandemic and so many people spend so much money on their wedding, right? It's time, it's money. It's a very special day. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, But so many couples have been forced to delay or cancel their weddings, their festivities, their celebrations due to the coronavirus pandemic, right? And the, we've heard so many different stories. But what this particular couple decided to do is so heart, heartwarming and it's so, so cool. So their names are Tyler and Melanie. Um, they are from Ohio. And they realized that they wouldn't be able to host the dozens of guests that they originally planned um, this summer. So they decided to cancel their formal reception. And instead, they decide to put their money they spent on food to good use. So on July 1st, after months of planning, they decided that a big wedding during the pandemic was just not for them. They wouldn't be able to cater and to have the people that they wanted there. And they decided to to cancel this. So they were quite nervous, you know, of course, about hosting that 150 people at, at their original venue and 
it was open their venue but it was under very strict regulations it's just different right it's you know you plan this big beautiful wedding with a bunch of people and having those restrictions it just it's not the same so you know they had everything planned down to the linens and everything was organized they had had it planned for quite some time but then they decided to plan on an intimate ceremony for family and close friends and this was just um a last week actually in august here they just planned this intimate ceremony and they had already pre-ordered food from their favorite local food truck and caterer. And that was Betty's Betty Bombs Bomb. Wow. So they had already pre-ordered food from their favorite local food truck and caterer. And that's Betty's Bomb Ass Burgers. That's what it's called. And instead of getting a full refund, they decided to do something quite special with that. So... Uh, they contacted Laura's Home, and Laura's Home is a nonprofit that feeds and houses homeless women and children in Cleveland, and they basically asked for permission to donate prepared food. So Lena Brown is the owner of Betty's, and they worked directly with the kitchen manager at Laura's Home to figure out what prepared kid-friendly food on the menu would work best for this cafeteria-style kitchen. So... They decided they were very happy to donate everything that they purchased. Um, Their only request was that they could help serve it to the residents on their wedding day. So not only did they donate all of their reception food to a shelter, but they decided to spend their wedding day serving the homeless this food that they donated. There is pictures and videos of them. They're literally like the bride. She's in her beautiful wedding gown. He's all dressed up nice in his tux. And they have masks on and hairnets and they're serving the food. It is so, so cool to see. I love it. So the CEO of City Mission, uh, his name is Rick Trickle. He operates crisis centers in Cleveland. And he says it's not unusual for us to have meal donations at our facilities. What made it completely special is that from their wedding ceremony, Melanie in her beautiful gown and Tyler in his tux put on a hairnet and gloves and serve the guest. So just super special. And like, you know, who does that on their wedding day? So the city mission um, oversees operations at Laura's Home, the nonprofit organization, and they were forced to seize all programming and volunteer opportunities in mid-March when the coronavirus prompted emergency closers across the country, right? So by the time that they you know, this couple called to do their donation in July, the center had just begun reintroducing limited volunteer opportunities. So they were thrilled to welcome the couple into the shelter. And this shelter currently houses about 145 single women, several pairs of mothers and their children. And the rest of the their family, um, the small wedding party, could not come to the center just due to the COVID-19 restrictions. But the residents were invited to come eat in socially distanced groups and celebrate the newlyweds. So that money that they had already paid to the caterer, um, their wedding that their wedding covered the cost of so much prepared food that the shelter was able to feed its residents for several days after her wedding day. So it wasn't just the one day, several days. Um, you know, and it's just such a cool story. Instead of, you know, fully canceling your wedding, they decided to do a small ceremony and then just donate what they could. Not only their food, but their time and spent their wedding day in the kitchen serving those people that are in need. So super cool story to round off today's episode. Thank you so much for listening to GSMC, America's Still Beautiful Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, Alyssa Joe. You already know how much I love being here and I appreciate you being here. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Please do not forget to head over and hit that subscribe button. I have new episodes out every Monday and Thursday. Like and follow us on social media. We update those regularly. And as always, leave a five-star review because it means the world and it helps out a ton. Till next time, thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows from the GSMC Podcast Network, from social media news to marketing news, and 
even weird news. The GSMC Podcast Network has you covered. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful Podcast. 